All right, we're continuing on with Gauss's law, and, and right now we're going to look at a, a different kind of symmetry. We just looked at a sphere. This time we're going to look at the electric field from an infinitely long cylinder. Well, it's not a perfect cylinder, but I'm going to say it's an infinitely long cylinder of radius r. And the reason we're going to make it infinitely long is because if it's at this point here, I don't want to have to deal with effects from the end of it. I just want this to extend very far in this direction and in this direction so that compared to whatever this radius is, r, um, that distance is almost infinite. What that does is allow me a high degree of symmetry. Because there are no edge effects to worry about, the electric field from this wire points radially out in all directions. That's the symmetry that's going to help us out a lot. If we were going to look at a front-on view of it, this would be the this would be the wire, the cylinder, carrying charge. And if it were positive, the electric field would just point radially out from it. It's a lot like a sphere. So let's get into it. Here is um, a cross section of our very long wire. Uh, and just like before, we're going to look at um, a conductor. carrying charge plus lambda here, so it's, it's infinitely long. We can't say that it has a charge, it just has an infinite amount of charge. We know now that it has a charge per length, lambda, on it. And it extends out in all directions and it's positive. Now, it being a conductor, all of the positive charge lives on the surface. That's going to make our lives easier. So we're going to look at the electric field as a function of R for places where R is less than A. Uh, and for places where R is greater than A. So, looking at R is less than A for our electric field, let's start off with Gauss's law. Closed integral of E dot dA is equal to the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. Well, before we even get into that, we need to talk about what our enclosed surface is going to be. That's very important. So, our imaginary surface this time is going to be inside of here an imaginary Gaussian cylinder. Our imaginary Gaussian cylinder has a length of L okay, and a radius of R. This time R is less than A so it's completely inside of this thing. When we go outside, we're going to have a bigger cylinder, and I'll draw it over here. A bigger cylinder that en encloses this, this thing. So that's enclosing this whole thing. It's going to have a length of L. And, and the reason we choose this should be apparent. The end caps of my cylinder right are are parallel to the electric field so they're not going to have any contribution and then the electric field pierces this thing at 90 degrees and is constant throughout that's why we're using a cylinder here so back to inside looking at this cylinder it's enclosing okay we blue it's enclosing zero charge so if that's the case, E dot dA is equal to zero. The area of that thing is obviously not zero. So we can say that the electric field inside of this cylinder is equal to zero. I hope we're seeing a pattern here as far as the electric field inside of conductors go. Right. Let's move on to this outside of the cylinder where R is greater than A. Here we've got E dot dA is equal to my Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And again, because looking at cross-section of this thing, the electric field points out radially in all directions from my wire. If my, my Gaussian surface is concentric to that cylinder, we see it coming out at 90 degrees, taking care of the dot product, and we see that the electric field is constant, all points on this thing, all the way throughout. The electric field is the same. So it can come out of my integration. And I've got the electric field times uh, the closed integral of dA, and that's equal to my enclosed charge 
over epsilon naught. So this dA is the surface area of our Gaussian imaginary cylinder, this brown one right here, that the electric field is going through. I don't have to worry about the surface area of the end caps because the electric field is not going through that. That contribution to the total E dot dA, to the total flux, is zero. So all we really need is the surface area of the round part. It's not the top and the bottom of the can, it's just the outside of the can. So for that, it's uh, 2 pi r times the length of my the length of my cylinder. So it's E times 2 pi r L. And that's equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Well, if, if we're looking at this thing, the enclosed charge is underneath of this cylinder. And since we're talking about in terms of lambda, my enclosed charge is going to be lambda times whatever the length that I'm enclosing is. So my enclosed charge is going to be lambda times L. That replaces my Q enclosed. Now, now looking at this, L isn't something that I'm necessarily given, but it crosses out, which is great. L is just something that we used for our imaginary Gaussian surface to look at the field. It's a good thing that it goes away. And that way when we solve for our electric field, we see that it is in terms of you know, everything that's physical property. So looking at this now, the electric field on the outside is equal to um, lambda over 2 pi r epsilon naught. Uh, in this case, we see a 1 over r dependency instead of a 1 over r squared dependency like we did before. And that's it. That's all we have for cylindrical symmetry. Watch the next video, uh, and we'll talk about um, what the electric field looks like around an infinitely long slab of charge.